Hi, I'm Anne Vanton. I have been working on programs uh, to create the right to a clean environment as a human right, <clears throat> to be enshrined in constitutions. And uh, I spoke about various constitutions in the last 50 years that have added this to the constitution. It's very important when you um, try to fight battles with the government to get environmental assessments, um, to prevent logging and uh, other devastation to uh, Aboriginal lands and uh, generally to reduce pollution from chemical plants and so on and so forth. I was uh, appointed by the federal government in Canada to um, the Immigration and Refugee Board to serve for a number of years as a, um, a judge of human rights cases. And what I saw in that context and what I learned about human rights of all kinds, um, the right to free speech, freedom of assembly, uh, education, and so on and so forth, I expanded my knowledge to include uh, environment, in other words, um, the human right for the clean environment. Mm -hmm. And I've read a number of books, um, one particularly by David Boyd, The Right to uh, a Healthy Environment, and uh, he did a review of 92 constitutions around the world, and uh, almost a, a lot of them written within the past 50 years that, that include already the right to um, a clean environment mm -hmm. as a human right. Canada does not have that in, uh, the in the Constitution, nor does China, nor does the US. So there are some that do and some that don't. But uh, Canada, we're trying to raise public awareness of the fact that we don't have this in our, in our Constitution and all the good things that would come if we did have because you would be able to uh, challenge environmental assessments by um, chemical plants and logging, um, oil, oil production, that type of thing, to make sure that they were within the guidelines. But we don't have that, but we will. Apparently 85% of the Canadian public would like to see that happen. Mm -hmm. So we just have to convince the government of the day to do it. Mm -hmm. And we're hoping that will happen soon. Uh, in France, uh, Jacques Chirac, he was a, a president of uh, France about 10 years ago. He pushed for the inclusion of uh, the right to envi an environment, right to a clean environment as a human right to be included in the French constitution. And the way they do it, did it in France, like all, most constitutions are different the way they're written. He uh, had an, uh, a charter for the environment. <clears throat> a charter for the environment that uh, is now part of their constitution. It's appended to the constitution, but has the power uh, to be in the constitution. And uh, recently, um, 2014, Tunisia uh, has just included the right to a clean environment as, as a human right. Um, Argentina has this included in Brazil. Uh, and. In both Argentina and Brazil, it has allowed um, Aboriginal peoples to defend their territories from loggers and uh, building of dams to destroy their, their territory. For instance, in, uh, uh, in Argentina, um, the inclusion of the right to and in uh, clean environment as a human right has allowed um, Aboriginal groups to pressure the government for clean water um, and the uh, and in Brazil, uh, the Capeo uh, Aboriginal group lobbied uh, the government to protect their lands. It doesn't always work because uh, the business and government in Brazil also want, it's called the Belamonte Project, it's a huge project. They want to dam a river in the Aboriginal area of the Capeo people to create hydroelectricity for the whole country. They, they're they giving the argument that the whole country needs this. And it may come online next year. So you don't always win if, if you have constitutional guarantees, mm -hmm. but it, it helps. 
and sometimes you win. 